Hello, Miss Pneumatic here. Today, I'm going to go over vacuum generators. Normally, a vacuum is regarded as an empty space with the absence of matter. But in reality, there is no perfect vacuum, not even in space. There are actually hydrogen atoms floating all across space, so in application, we refer to a state where the pressure is below one standard atmosphere as a vacuum. A vacuum generator is a device that creates a vacuum. We can use the pressure created by a vacuum generator to lift an object or suck in gas or steam. So why don't we learn more about how a vacuum generator creates a vacuum? In order to understand vacuum generators, we first need to grasp Bernoulli's principle. Bernoulli's principle concerns the correlations of the cross-sectional area, speed, and pressure of a moving fluid. Let's take a look at an illustration. There is a long pipe, the diameter of which becomes increasingly smaller. A thin pipe is connected to the bottom and it is filled with water inside. Then, air is allowed to flow at a constant speed from area A to area B. What do you think will happen when the air from a larger area enters into a smaller area? In order for the same amount of air to flow through area A and area B in the same amount of time, the velocity will have to be higher in area B. The volume of the segment marked by T is the same on each side, but because area B is narrower and longer than area A, the air has to move faster. So basically, when the cross-sectional area of the passage through which a fluid flows is smaller, the velocity will be higher. The change in velocity in turn affects the pressure of the fluid. The pressure of the fluid arises as the particles in the fluid move in various directions and collide with the pipe wall and other particles. When the fluid moves faster, the particles move toward the same direction and this reduces collision among the particles. So when the velocity of the fluid increases, the pressure decreases. Let's take a look at the smaller pipe on the bottom. When air flows into area B, the pressure decreases, and the water level rises in area B. To summarize Bernoulli's principle, when the cross-sectional area of a pipe decreases, the velocity increases and the pressure decreases. In contrast, when the cross-sectional area increases, the velocity decreases and the pressure increases. We can apply this principle to vacuum generators. This is an internal structural diagram of a vacuum generator. First, compressed air gets sucked into the nozzle. As the space tightens, the velocity increases and the pressure drops below the atmospheric pressure. The compressed air gets released into the chamber. Because air flows from high pressure to low pressure, the air in the atmosphere gets sucked into the vacuum generator. So the compressed air in a vacuum state in the chamber meets the air from the atmosphere and they get sucked into the diffuser together. The air pressure gets reduced inside the vacuum generator to create a vacuum. Once that happens, things can be sucked in using the vacuum pad. Let's take a look at the circuit diagram. Compressed air enters from the air compressor. The pressure is reduced by the regulator and the air enters into the vacuum generator through the valve. Once a vacuum is created inside the vacuum generator, the air from the atmosphere gets sucked in. Then, it gets released with the compressed air. To reduce the noise generated from escaping air, a silencer may be installed. Also, air in the atmosphere contains a lot of impurities such as moisture, dust, and oil. So it is advisable to install a filter between the vacuum pad and the vacuum generator to filter out the impurities. The vacuum switch below the filter detects the vacuum pressure to check for absorption and deviation. We saw the operating principle of a vacuum generator and the circuit diagram. Characteristics unique to vacuum generators are as follows. First, it has a simple internal structure. Unlike other actuators, there aren't any moving parts like a spool. 
Second, it boasts a long lifetime because there is no need for an additional device to create a vacuum. Third, it has excellent responsiveness, making it suitable for repeated on-off processes. A vacuum is created as soon as air is injected, and due to its fast response, it is often used in repeat processes. Let's examine an actual vacuum generator. Vacuum generators can be used in diverse ways. They can be attached to valves or pads, but they also come in the form of a pipe or box. This particular product is a box type vacuum generator. As you can see, there is an input port and an output port, and there is a nozzle and diffuser inside here. This hole here is where air enters. When air is released from this vacuum generator, it makes a large sound, so a noise reducer has been added to it. Here, you can see that there is a vacuum switch. Now, I'll connect this to a pad and show you how it suctions objects. Here's a phone, a box, etc. By connecting a pad to the vacuum generator, I can grab and lift all kinds of objects. Today, we got to learn about vacuum generators. I tried my best to make everything easy to understand. What did you think? Was it alright? That brings us to the end of the video. Please hit the like button and subscribe. I'll see you again next time. Bye for now. Miss Pneumatic Channel is working together with KCC Precision 